Hello, my name is Kevin Clay, and I am one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Six Sigma Development Solutions Incorporated. Today, I'm going to give you a brief uh, introduction to uh, a statistical tool called the Pareto chart. The Pareto chart is a great tool for scoping down uh, or, for, or for finding uh, a smaller subset of a larger population. So it follows the um, concept called the Pareto concept uh, developed by uh, Villafred Pareto, which basically says that 80% of the wealth of any civilized society belongs in 20% of the population or is usually found in 20% of the population. In Lean Six Sigma, we, we kind of correlate that to uh, uh, a distribution of data, like defect distribution. So we might say that 20% uh, of your defects, 20% of the 100% of defects you are experiencing are giving you 80% of your problem, might be uh, stealing 80% of your capacity, but might be hitting your bottom line, 80%. Uh, but it helps us to, instead of, instead of focusing on the large problem, everything, uh, we, we take that, this Pareto chart and we use data to help us get down to that smaller sample of the larger population that, that really is the biggest bang for the buck. That, that's where we need to focus. Uh, and unfortunately, a lot of companies don't really understand that. They, they task a green belt or a black belt with going out and saving the world. It's not going to happen. So we as practitioners need to understand how to get from that large scope that has been tasked to us and get down to a smaller, more manageable scope so that we can then make a change and then translate that change to, to everything else that looks like it. So um, the Pareto chart is a great way to do that. I think it's one of the most powerful tools uh, in the Six Sigma tool belt because it, it helps us to scope down and scoping down is a very key um, um, part of what we do. Okay, so I'm using Minitab uh, version 20. Uh, we are going to be looking at the uh, Pareto chart using the assistant. Um, we, uh, at our firm, we, uh, we teach using the assistant, uh, especially to our green belts, uh, not necessarily to our black belts, but the assistant helps make the uh, uh, statistics uh, a lot easier, it does a lot of the heavy lifting for us and gives us a lot of graphical outputs um, that really, in layman's terms, tell us what's going on. So uh, you are looking at a uh, mini tab screen here. Uh, I'm going to go up to the assistant. The uh, Pareto chart is found in graphical analysis. Okay, we open a graphical analysis uh, and over here we have a number of graphical, actually uh, th there's a number of graphical analysis throughout this uh, page, but we are going to click on the Pareto chart. All right, so th there's two ways to really look at the Pareto chart uh, with this dialog box. This is, um, uh, if you get this drop down box says, we can either look at summarized values in a table or each defect observation in a separate row. Okay, so we're gonna start off with uh, summarized values in a table and, and that we have down here. So basically what, what, uh, what that means is that, uh, let's say that this is, uh, maybe this is a, a shift. Uh, uh, and we are taking defect data on what happens at, in that shift. So that one row of data might be how many soggy sandwiches uh, did we find out of you know, a population? How, how many did we find were defective? Okay, let, let me kind of go back and give you the scenario here because I forgot to do that. Uh, this scenario comes from something that we give to our green belts uh, in our class. It's a, a fake project. It, it's a uh, fici fictional company called Peanut Butter and Jelly Incorporated. It's a company that makes peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for uh, kids and schools all over the domestic U.S. 
Um, and the green belt has been tasked with uh, finding out why our cost per sandwich exceeds what, what we predicted our cost would be. So our margin is shrinking. What we thought would be a profit margin is actually less than, than, than what, uh, uh, but, uh, what it is. I'm sorry, it is uh, what we thought was our profit margin, we are actually making less. So uh, we are trying to find out what the problem is. Well, the Pareto chart is part of that to help us scope down. It can even be in the analyze phase to help us to, to uh, even further analyze. So our, right now what we're doing is we're trying to find out all of these defects that, that are in this data set. Which of the defects is that 20% um, that's really causing, causing us 80% of the problem? So we're gonna look at this first from a defect summary. Uh, basically each row, let's say that's a shift. Uh, and that shift tells us how many defects come out of that shift. Uh, and and th this could be uh, of several sites, several departments. So we've got a lot of data. All right, so it says defect name column, and that's basically the defect. All right, what is the defect we're looking at? Uh, in this case, there's a number of defects and they're in defect ID. So we're gonna double click on defect ID. And then it says, uh, what is the column that has the summarized value? Okay, so basically we go in per, per shift, per site, per area, and we count how many defects, and then we put it in this column under defect quantity. Okay, so that's gonna double click on defect quantity. Now we have this option, combine defects of this percent or less. So let's say we have a thousand defects. Well, if we don't combine defects, and, and I'll show you what this uh, looks like here in a second, if we don't combine, then what's gonna happen is our Pareto charge is just gonna look like a, a, a black blob because it's going to, it's going to squeeze all these uh, uh, columns together and, and you're, it's gonna be indecipherable. So basically we can, we can look at this and say, well, we wanna see the first 40% of the defects, all right? Because the other 60%, the trivial, uh, many it is not important to us. Uh, and we're really not going to know that until we run it. So I'm, I'm going to do not combine because I don't know how many there are and, and what the uh, uh, Pareto chart is going to look like. So uh, I also put show cumul cumulative line. Okay, that's a line that just kind of gives me the cumulative total. Again, I'll show you that here in just a second. So we're going to hit OK. All right, so this gives me a Pareto chart, all right, uh, with a uh, what looks like a Pareto distribution. Now, what's so great about the assistant is it, gonna, it gives you a number of charts that really help you to understand what's going on. So this is just giving you the basic output. Um, it's showing you that soggy sandwich is 69.9% of the cumulative defects. Okay, now if we get soggy sandwich and, uh, and the next defect and we uh, put those together, together they are 83.0% of the cumulative defects. That's, that's what this cumulative line here is. But individually, that one defect sandwich right here, sandwich F, um, is only 13.2% individually, but when you combine the, the uh, top two defects, it's uh, those two are 83%. So that might uh, help us to understand if, if we have to make a certain impact, a certain percentage impact, uh, how many defects we, we may need to focus on. Okay, now this graph just gives us uh, kind of an understanding of what a a strong Pareto effect would look like. And so we, we would correlate that uh, to the pictures here to find out, you know, do we have, what kind of a Pareto effect do we have? What kind of a Pareto distribution? 
And then we have the uh, report card. Uh, the report card in this case just gives you uh, kind of a high level understanding uh, of uh, the prototype itself. The report card in other graphs uh, actually gives you a lot more information, but uh, it's, it's really good, this report card, because it helps us to understand maybe if, if our, if our data is incorrect, it doesn't in this graph, but it will in others. Uh, it gives you a lot of information to really help you understand, you know, uh, the prototype chart itself. So I'm going to go back up here and uh, we're going to run this again, but this time, this time we are going to combine defects. And let's say we're going to combine uh, everything after the cumulative 50% of the 100% of defects we don't want to see. Okay, so I'm going to put that there. I'm going to hit OK again. Ah, and what it does, it just shows me the first two. All right, anything other than that, um, I, I might, not, might not, uh, see to be, um, I might not see that to be valuable. So let's, let's increase this to maybe uh, 75%. So after the cumulative 75%, all right, I don't want to see from 75 to 100%. Okay, again, um, because that sandwich F takes us out to 80, 83%, we're not going to see the next. So let's try it one more time. Let's move this out to 85%. Okay, and it always gives us that other bar. And that other bar is basically from, in this case, from that 85% uh, all the way out to 100%. So it just, uh, uh, accumulates all the other bars together. All right, so let's go back in and change this from summarized values in a table to each de uh, defect observation in its own row. Actually, I need to change this over to uh, the new data set and then I will open that. Okay, so we're gonna change each, uh, each defect uh, observation in, in a separate row. Okay, so in this case, our defect uh, uh, items, defect data column is defect ID. Again, those are the individual worded defects. Okay, and then uh, the X column at site. So this is basically saying that we, we don't have a summarized value. So per day, we don't have a database that that counts, that summarizes the amount of defects per shift, per site, et cetera. So every time a defect shows up um, on, on the floor, uh, it's, it's logged in you know, our quality database or whatever. Uh, and it's also listing the site it comes from. So we can actually use this and break it down by site. Now, the site is optional. I can just uh, use the defect ID and it would just give you one Pareto chart. But I, I don't necessarily think that's that's valuable. Uh, it's more valuable for me to see is there is there some what uh, of a more of a Pareto distribution per site. So this is what we call multi uh, multivariate studies. So this can help me to understand uh, which of my sites I might want to focus down to. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and not combine. And again, I'm gonna show the cumulative bar in each one. So let's go ahead and hit okay. All right, so what this does now is uh, it gives me a overall report uh, on my defects. So that that's, that's irrespect or uh, doesn't take into account uh, sites, it just overall. And then it actually breaks down per site. <clears throat> All right. So we can see that, that there, uh, um, you know, looks to be a Pareto distribution uh, in site one and, and site two, uh, but not necessarily in site three or site four. Okay, the diagnostic report just again says, you know, what is a, a Pareto distribution look like? You'll see that over here on the Pareto effect. 
Um, and here we have actual data numbers to, the, to give us really, you know, where is, uh, wh where is the biggest percentage per site and overall. Okay, and again, we have the uh, report card. So uh, again, we, we have given you just a kind of a brief introduction to the um, uh, Pareto chart using the assistant. Again, my name is Kevin Clay, and I'm one of the Lean Six Sigma instructors here at Lean Six Sigma, uh, or Six Sigma Development Solutions Incorporated. Um, I hope you uh, have learned a little bit about the uh, Pareto chart using the assistant. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call me. Uh, my email address is kclay at sixsigmadsi.com. That's K-C-L-A-Y at sigma, dsi.com um, And have a wonderful day.